Go ahead. We're going to call this meeting to order. It's 6.15, February 28th, 2022. And um, the uh, to conform with open meeting law, the agenda has been posted in three places on the website and has been emailed to individuals on the list. We would like to ask people with comments, your presenter, but people uh, with comments to keep those comments to five minutes, please. And... Um, excuse me, Patty, I can't hear you very well. I'm sorry to interrupt you. You want me to move closer? Um, I don't know. Let's get that on the side. There should be a volume up or down. Right there. Closer Kristen, by. you're nice and loud, but I couldn't hear Patty much. I'm sorry. I apologize for interrupting. Is, is, that, any, is that better? Uh, not really. Okay. You're going to make me do this, aren't you? You're going to come over here? <laughs> okay how's that oh that's much better thank, thank you so much sorry to bother you <laughs> okay so um uh, people wanting to uh, make comments are limited to five minutes and um we are going to look at the uh, minutes from the prior meeting which was February 14th, 2022. That's correct. Didn't see anything I, wrong with that. I have also read them, so I moved for February 14th, 2022. Second it. All in favor? All right. Aye. And that's what we have for meeting minutes. And so let's turn it over to our guest speaker and the first item on our new business, Chris Matrick. Um, let's talk about the West Hill Bridge update. Yeah. I want to turn a little bit so everybody can see me. I can see everybody. Can you hear me, Joan? Um, I can't hear you too well. Sorry. You might have to come up. That's um, a little weird. How about now? Um, that's a little better. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I wonder where the speaker is, like the intake that whole is. thing is a speaker. Yeah, well, like, where's the microphone, I wonder, though? That's what I think it is. Actually, I can hear you loud and clear. Martha, maybe you can okay. turn up your volume. I did. I turned it all the way oh, up, and it makes okay. you guys nice, really loud, but for some reason. Okay, it's um, fine. Don't, don't worry about it. I'll figure it out. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt you. I'm sorry. So th thanks for having me tonight. Um, I like to come periodically. It's been a while since I've been to the Rochester Select Board. Just to give you a quick update on things that are going on in town um, on the Green Mountain National Forest and some things maybe on the horizon. So the first thing I'd just like to touch on is um, we've had, if you haven't noticed, we've had a bunch of timber management going on um, in Rochester. We have uh, one, two, three, four four different timber sales going on in Rochester um, or affiliated with Rochester. Some of them are like a lot of soup house on the Chittenden Brook Road is actually in Chittenden, but it's accessed via Rochester. So just want to give you a quick update on those. So we'll start out with soup house, which is the one that's the road right next to the Chittenden Brook Road. Um, they're done in there. Um, they've completed that portion of that sale. They have some closeout work to do in the spring, but all the logs have been cut and all the logs have been hauled. And I think all their equipment is out of there as well. So once they come back in the spring and they put their water bars in place and do their closeout work, they'll be out of that, that section right there. The other piece of uh, soup house is the one that's up by the Brandon Gap backcountry ski area, right by the V-Trans pull out there. Um, that's been a slow operation there. There's two units in there and the operators, a chainsaw and a cable skitter. So he's a one-man show, so he's been moving along pretty slowly. But he did say that he thought he would be out of there if the weather holds. He'll be out of there within about a week and a half. Oh. Um, and then there'll be some remediation work that we need to do to the bottom of the slope there where the ski lines come down. That'll be a combination of us, a little bit of the logger, and then uh, ridge line also helping out with that. There was a little impact um, to the Chittendenburg ski trail system um, from the operation by the... Chittenden Brook Road because uh, we were doing some harvesting within that system. Um, we heard from some folks concerns about condition of the trail and you couldn't find the trail anymore. That trail has been uh, redesignated, reflagged, reblazed, and um, 
we'll do, be doing some slash remediation on that this upcoming summer. Gonna get the slash a little lower than it is. <clears throat> the Swans Mill uh, timber sale is um, didn't really operate much this winter. That's up off Maple Hill and Wing Farm Road. There wasn't much operation up there. They had a little bit of activity early on in the season, um, but then they that's uh, they focused all their same purchaser as uh, Soup House, so they focused all their attention on Soup House. The garage timber sale, which is up via access via Liberty Hill Road, it was originally going to be accessed via State Garage Road, but the purchaser um, had some concerns about that access and is subsequently ask, accessing it off Liberty Hill. He's uh, operating a couple of units, couple three units up there, and continues to do so. And, and will he'll close out at the end of the season. We probably have three weeks left in the timber management season. Um, before the roads and the units will start to get too soft to operate in. It all depends on the weather. And then the last one is Camp 5. That's the one off, up off Forest Road 62, Thresher Hill, out to Bingo. They're, they're in full swing out there. That's a new purchaser for us, Matt McAllister, and he has um, big modern equipment and a pretty solid crew, and they've been running fast and furious out there. Um, they took that Norway spruce plantation out. If you haven't been out there, beautiful vista out there now. You wouldn't believe that, that you could see anything from Bingo before, but wow, what a view now. It'll be there temporarily. And then he's working on a couple other units a little close down by Campsite 5. Okay, he'll, I know where that is. He'll, he'll, he'll wrap up at the same time the garage timber sale probably wraps up. And I know he's been talking with the town to get the, it been plowed down to the Four Corners area, which has historically not been done. So appreciate that. Um, is that going to go on for another year or so now? That thing yeah, he has three to five years to finish it, but he's been moving fast. Um, I would guess he'll have another year, maybe two, in there. It's a big sale area. And then, um, then, <clears throat> excuse me. Following that, the next sale in Rochester that would get offered would be the Monastery Timber Sale, which is all the way out at the end of the Bingo Road, past the Four Corners on the uphill side. Um, but we have a timber sale down in Pittsfield that's gonna come out first, the Mayo timber sale. Um, so that'll be in front of Monastery. So I wouldn't anticipate Monastery being offered until um, probably the end of FY23 for us. Most of that sale's in Hancock, the Monastery. Yeah, one all of it's in Hancock, but it would be accessed via the Bingo Road. So. Right. How far over to the, towards the ski area will that Go it won't go. It won't go that far because we have wilderness in between oh, yeah. us and the ski area. So, it, Monastery Peak is actually in the wilderness. We just named it that because it was a landscape yeah. feature mm -hmm. that we could identify. Right. Um, so that's it from timber management perspective. Right now, um, this summer we're going to see more segments of the Velamont Trail, that end-to-end -end mountain bike trail that um, the Velamont and Vermont huts are, are striving to put in. Um, we have some funding and Ridgeline has some funding to construct segments in Rochester right now. They worked, they worked up Rochester Tunnel over to Hancock Tunnel this past year. And they also worked a little bit kind of down um, off Wing Farm Road, making connections there and they have more funding. So Tom LePesker, Rochester resident, will be continuing to peck away at uh, construction of, those, of the Velamont Trail, which is very exciting. Is there any uh, plan involved with uh, adding more parking on those ski area side up there? At um, at the Brandon, Brandon Gap? Yeah. Yeah, so um, that's that's actually next on my list. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. We have a, we have a plan. Um, it's running through the environmental analysis process right now to reopen the old Bear Brook picnic ground parking area as a winter only parking area to try to get the backcountry ski traffic out of that pullout and avoid the spillover that we see on very busy days. Um, and then we, we've got a couple of, uh, we've got some requests for funding in to construct it too. It won't take much construction, um, but we do have to replace that culvert at the entrance right there where you go from the pull off to the park, the old parking area. So that will hopefully alleviate the on route 73 parking Mm -hmm. um, that we see on those busy days up at Brandon Gap. Yeah. Okay, good. And we've also um, 
given Ridgeline the go-ahead for a phased approach to constructing some additional backcountry ski lines that were approved as part of Robinson. These lines are up behind the Chittenden Brook Hut, um, so they're way in there behind their, their, they'd be south of the campground on that, that, that slope up there. Um, and associated, sort of associated with that also, we have a plan to um, expand the, that parking lot at the end of the Chittenden Brook Road a little bit. It's not really a parking lot, it's kind of an entrance with some parking spaces. To make that look a little bit more like a, a true parking lot, we'd reconfigure the entrance to have one entrance as, as opposed to the U that's there right now or the Y that's there mm -hmm. right now. Um, we'd have one entrance and then parking on either side at that, that point. So that would hopefully accommodate a little bit better. There was some congestion there with the log trucks for the soup house sale and then recreationists there on various days over the past few years. Um, and we want to make it a little bigger so we, if we put those backcountry ski lines in, when we put them in, they'll, um, they'll be able to accommodate the additional parking down there. So that uh, new road they put in, is that going to be something they're going to, I'm looking at the terrestrial. Yeah. So that, that was. In there, I'm thinking they're going to end up taking a snow machine up in there to, to get people out, probably. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you'd need to, to go up there. It won't be plot the. The Chittenden Brook Road, Terry, or the, or the, or the... Either one of them, depending on, you know, where we, yeah. where we can get in to get to them. So the Chittenden Brook Road would never be plowed all the way right. in, but you'd be able to get up there on a snow machine or a tracked vehicle in the winter. And that, the road next to it, Forest Road 38, that they used for the timber sale, um, that got improved to a, what we call a maintenance level one road. Uh, a lot of work got done to it, but they'll end up pulling the culverts out. Right and putting the ditches in, but it would see it's all gra all the gravel will remain in there. So you just have to, you'd have to navigate the ditches where the culverts are if you had to get up in there, but it would be open. So... It's not open to the public, but... For the, I, I'm sure there's going to be gates. There's a gate at the end of that road. So would we be... You guys already have the key, I think. It's our standard, it's the snowmobile key. That 3381 key that the club has. The bill won't have anything to do with it. No, 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 I know. But I think the town also has, the fire department has keys. I don't believe it, but I'll... Uh, I'll get you some I'll if look. you don't have any. Okay. I'll come come down the office and I'll get you both of our keys that we use. How, how far in does that road go anyway? It goes pretty far back. Does it go almost to the beaver ponds where they're... They, um... I mean, they're yeah, up above Yeah, it's on the other them. side of the river, but yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. up above them, I know, but... Yeah, you know. it goes way back in there. Bruce said it went in about a mile and a half. It would be a little bit more than that. It's yeah, that gets you back in there a ways. Yeah. yeah, if you had to carry somebody out. So. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know what they would be doing over there. I guess they could be doing anything over there, really, hunting or skiing or whatever. But um, we did talk about, at one point, talk about considering that, maybe like connecting that to the Chittenden Brook ski trails and having that be another trail on the way out. But with you, when you pull the culverts out and everything, it, it just, it's just not worth it. Right. So, um, so that's kind of all the updates on that. The only other update that I know is an agenda item that you have, I think, and that's on the West Hill Bridge project. So we've got a little bit of delay um, due to various reasons on the West Hill Bridge. Um, the money's there, it's not going anywhere. Um, but our temp bridge is tied up with another project awaiting not the same type of funding, but a similar pot of funding coming from Eastern Federal Lands, our Eastern Federal Lands Department. And um, we don't have the money for that project yet. We're getting it this year, but it's a timing issue. Um, so we can't start and finish our project till we get the funding for it, and that bridge is tied up down on the south half of the forest um, until we finish that project. So we had talked with Joan about delaying, you know, going out for bid on that project till either later this fall or next next year. Um, if the if the town had money that had a timeline on it that it had to be obligated within a certain amount of time, um, we had the suggestion that like you could put it out to bid, only put it out to bid as a no construction until FY twenty three, you know, next in twenty twenty three. Um, yeah, so that's... I, I don't think we have that issue right now. Yeah. I, I'm not aware of it anyway. I, I think Joan could probably answer better to that, but I, I think we're good with that. Joan, do you know if yeah. they're... Yeah, typically... Yep.
the infrastructures grant and typically they give us a year um, but when there's extenuating circumstances they uh, you know will extend it so I think we're all right there okay thank you yeah so we would be you have the bridge we'd be done with our project on the south half this year we'd get the bridge moved up ready to be put in place for when construction would start next year um I think the most disappointed folks would probably be the folks who live out on West Hill Road, anxious to get that bridge replaced. Um, but it's been that way for so long. Hopefully, the one one year delay is just a little speed bump on the road to fix that. New owners out there trying to build a house. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so the holdup is uh, obtaining the financing and obtaining a temporary bridge. Yeah. Which one is the bigger of the two? They're about equal. Um, I mean, even if even if the town were be able to come up with its own somewhere to get a temp bridge, um, we feel that like it's got to go through the project has to go through this review process with Beach and Center Lands once it's under design. They have to sign off on everything, and they're backed up. So we're not even sure that you would. The, the fear would be that you would go out to bid on something and that you wouldn't have the approval from Beach and Center Lands at enough time to be able to have get this constructed in this season anyway. So the thought was that the safest approach was to, and Joan, if I'm speaking, if I'm starting to ramble and say things that aren't entirely accurate based on our conversation, please interrupt me. Um, but the safest approach would be to just postpone one year. So we wouldn't consider going out to contractors that can provide their own temporary bridge. You could, but it would increase the cost of the project. Mm -hmm. I think the, the project is budgeted under the assumption that it's our bridge good. is going to be used. All right. I think I think you're right on that. And that's the amount of money that was requested and had that in mind. Mm -hmm. So if you did, you'd jack the cost up a little bit, probably. I don't know how much. Okay. I know there's some folks out there anxious to get going. What, what, is, the, what is the big thing the, the only concern that we really run into the other roadblock is east and federal lands the approving agency being backed up. We could go out to bid, but if they don't if they don't sign off on the right, the we review, need to have funding in place too. first. Yeah. So right. if, if, if that would be too big a risk. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you're absolutely right. But if the funding comes through, maybe they could get creative with a bridge. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if that were to get signed off on like yeah. tomorrow or whenever, it is in enough time to be able to pull it off and you could find yeah. a bridge. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's um that's all I have unless folks have questions for me. I'm always happy to answer any questions about the Forest Service or what we're up to here or elsewhere. The uh, timber that's coming out of these jobs, um, are they is, is that timber still going into Canada? It's going everywhere. Um, it's not all going to Canada. Like it, the, from Soup House, you know, that's A. Johnson. So most of that's going to Bear Mill up in Bristol. Mm -hmm. Um, the, you know, the pulp wood, it just depends. Some of it's going to firewood, some of it's going to pellet creation, some of it's going to wood to energy. Um, it's, it's really hard. We don't, we don't specify by to our purchasers, like, and they don't have to impose like what they're doing with the wood. Okay. Um, but you know, we know that the saw logs go into durable goods, either lumber or furniture or whatever, hmm. but the pulp is typically firewood or pellets or, or wood to energy. Hmm. And we did have, you know, we did have um recently a uh some information that there was going to be a protest out at the the soup at soup house on 73 right at brandon gap or or it could have been a shipment book too but it never materialized into anything but we are aware of the threat threat not the right word really of the possibility of having some folks come and protest uh, timber management so we'll, do, we'll, you know, as we get that information and assess the risk of that, our law enforcement folks will we'll certainly inform the town if we felt there was like a significant risk to a large group of people coming into town um, to to disrupt um, land management activities. So taking into account the entire project, which was supposed to be a three-year project, it's the timber sales are three. They're, they're three to five years three typically. Five years. Are we sixty percent done? Forty percent done? Well, Soup House is a hundred percent done. Mm -hmm. So the project, the overall Robinson project, will have 
probably 10 different timber sales come out of it. Not all of them are in Rochester, mm -hmm. um, but there are, there are quite a number, especially out the Bingo Road, um, that are and up at Chittenden Brook Road, although those sales will actually be in Chittenden, but coming out this way. So each one of those timber sales could last, has a lifespan of three to five years, typically. Okay. So if they're stacked back to back, you could be talking about, you know, 10, 15, 20 years of timber management activity going on. Okay. Um, they typically, the, long, the, the contractors, the purchasers typically don't um, take the full time to do them because it's in their best interest to capitalize on a good market and the market is good right now. So that's why they're moving pretty quickly through. They like to be in and out because then they can move on to their next job. Well, I know that they're they're renting houses and places to stay and eating out. So they're bringing some business into our Bring valley. Some business well. into town. Thank you. Anybody else? Everybody's good on Zoom, I believe. All right. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. It is good to hear from you from time to time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so do you have another West Hill? Bridge agenda topics as far as mine. No, just or the we just cover bridge it? update. No, okay. pretty much All right. covered it. All right. Very good. Yeah. Appreciate it. Have a good evening. You, you too. too. Thanks for coming. Pleasure. Next on our list of wonderful things to do tonight is approving a liquor license for the skip card. They're renewing for one year, and I move that we do renew the liquor license for the skip card. I second that. All in favor? All right. No discussion, right? Yeah. I think it's on the other side. On Sunday. Sunday, that's all open. I think they're short. Yes, they do. This is just one signature on that, Julie. Okay, let's move along to um, we find ourselves with a vacant seat for the uh, justice of the peace um i guess before we proceed any further i i certainly would like to thank joan hubbard for decades of service to this position um thank you joan java um but uh it's time for her to move on and time for us to move on and nominate someone new for the position we do have a recommendation and someone um uh, uh, allowed us to nominate them so we would like to nominate annette Shirley west to fill the vacancy and that vacancy will go until february of 2023 february 1st yes 2023. Fe february 1st. Yep. um we are nominating uh annette to recommend her to the governor because the actual appointment comes from the office of the governor um, so I move that, is there any discussion? I move that uh, we accept Annette as our recommendation to the governor to be appointed to fill a seat. I second uh, that. All in favor? All right. All right. Welcome back, Shirley. Question. Yes. Does that mean? Effective right now, even though the governor has not made. I have to, I have to send a letter up to the governor. Okay, so we won't get her name into the town report. Mm. I know he's not going to deny the recommendation. You, you could but if I can in. get it in the town report, would you like it there? I would. I would think you could put it in pending, pending governor yeah. approval. But that I would say. But what? He's not going to. Right, he's not going to do anything but accept it. So, but if I can get it in, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, right. And if for some reason he doesn't, we'll make it uh, known publicly at a select board meeting. <laughs> yeah, and get it officially in the minutes and all of it. Okay, and then moving on to the last item that we have 
in new business. Um, I believe this one is being removed from the agenda as um, it was determined that we needed to uh, change the language on the agenda. Um, uh, so in our new business. Um, so we're going to table the approval for financing on the firehouse loan until the 14th of March. Um, it just it just needs to be presented in a little bit of a different way. Now, I think we're going to be looking for Joan to be on deck. Joan, are you here? I'm here, uh, okay. but I don't have much to <laughs> Um, not much in the way of updates at the moment, sort of in between things. Uh, the design work is moving along on Town Line Road on the culvert replacement there. And so uh, I've been planning to uh, put in an application for a structures grant to VTrans in April. Um, and cooter has been in touch with Cricket with comments on the draft plans. And otherwise, um, helping Frank, where I can on um, figuring out what to do with the bids we've received for the backup generator. And otherwise, waiting to hear from the FEMA folks. Okay, I was gonna <laughs> ask for an update on yeah. that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's all in their hands at this point. It's been in their hands for the last couple of months and all we can do is wait, unfortunately. I've reminded them how long we have been waiting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Number of 2019. <laughs> well, good for you. Keep reminding them. <laughs> okay. In case we have to run to bridge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay. We do not have a representative here from the library, nor do we have a representative from the highway department. Um, Thank you, Terry, for stepping in, um, helping out on that last storm. Um, and Terry, that leaves you up to deck for utilities operator. Do you have anything good to tell us there? Uh, guys, coming to upgrade our mission stuff tomorrow. That because of 3G is no longer. So none of our mission stuff's going to work. So he's putting in the new stuff for the and that's the monitoring system for yep. the set the sewer for all sewers mm -hmm. and at one time you said that you were scheduled going to a class about security yeah but it wasn't i think it pains more the you know a bigger system or at least mm -hmm. a system that has ours is in the ground so there's not a lot you can do to upset okay. it yep. That makes sense. So, and our water, you know, basically they, they're saying that most of the problems are in town. Mm -hmm. People get fired and get pissed and sabotage mm. is what 90% of the problems are. Well, right. we, we also could note that there is, uh, we have alerts going on for security on a few different fronts, um, and our utilities is one of them. Our office data is another one. So um, we're taking that all very seriously. And uh, hopefully we get serious for no reason at all. All right. Jeff Gephardt, are you with us? Uh, good evening. Hello. I don't have I don't have a lot to report. Um, I did uh, uh, reach out to um, Green Mountain Power. I advised them that we had received a grant award to, to purchase and install an LP gas emergency generator for the town office, uh, but also asked if with a working resiliency zone, whether that would be redundant, and if not, um, could we serve the same functions with battery storage? Um, so we're looking at what the estimated range or coverage time that the resiliency a zone could provide uh, emergency power to the village and the town clerk's office. Uh, GMP has asked uh, for our, one of our representatives uh, with them, Freeman Corey, to look at the uh, town office energy use and 
help us identify what size uh, emergency uh, backup battery power we might need. Um, but at this point in time, uh, it's still too early for them to definitely comment on the estimated range of the uh, resiliency zone. So we'll probably get um, information from um, Freeman Corey first about uh, sizing and cost of uh, doing the emergency generator function um, with a battery electric system uh, before we know fully what kind of uh, time the resiliency zone buys us. Um, also trying to keep things moving on the uh, fast charger um, and level two charger front. Um, I ask really for, you know, where is, where is uh, GMP's responsibility stop and Rochester's responsibility kick in? Um, GMP's response is that uh, they will take care of all necessary costs for interconnection, including primary and secondary side work for the installation. The town will only need to be on the hook for any civil site work to land the charger, i.e. fire station upgrades, uh, the old fire station, um, or parking lot improvements at the park and ride. And uh, they've pointed out that Frank, uh, Frank's been working with Zach there, um, apparently uh, both like the park and ride option. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still not myself personally understanding what the difference between um, the interconnection, including the primary and secondary side were, um, but uh, we'll, I'll hone that down so that we can begin to, to look at a cost estimate for that on the downside. Okay. There possibly could be um, some grant funding or ARPA funding to help us out with that. I think it is something. Yeah, and I, I will be working, uh, continuing to work with Vermont Council on Rural Development. Uh, and um, the primary thing we're going to be looking at with that, well, there'll be two things. One is helping us locally manage the task forces that were set up. Uh, and the other is looking for grants. You go. Perfect. Good. Okay, thank you. Spring's right around the corner, so maybe we can get some action done on that this year. <laughs> that'd, be when, that'd be sweet. Thank you. Okay, we can move on to see uh, we have no old business. Do we have any public comment out there? Everybody's quiet on Zoom. Going once. Going mm -hmm. twice. They're all set. Go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Frank and I are going to approve some bills. Um, and so I move that we adjourn the meeting. I second that. All in favor? All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Look forward to seeing you on Zoom in a couple of weeks. So we'll be doing an I know swap seat too. So <laughs> you won't forget that. Have a good evening and thank you. Thank you for all your hard work, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're going to do here. Wait, should I not end this yet? Hey, I do have one question, you guys. Is town meeting to be Zoomed or is town meeting not Zoomed? It won't be Zoom. It's in person. No Zoom. Okay. We'll see everybody there tomorrow. Thank you. It's no, it's not tomorrow, not Kinley. Tomorrow. Oh. You asked the wrong what? one. <laughs> when is it? March 28th. One month from today. Well, that's a long time away. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. All right, guys. Report before the meeting. Yes. Hopefully. Take care.